Welcome to CivilNet. I have a very special guest here in our studio. His name is Bradley Busetto. He is the UN Resident Coordinator here in Armenia. Bradley, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the creation of the United Nations, um, and it's quite a milestone. Looking back on the seven decades of the work that the UN has done, what would you say has been its um, greatest achievement? Huh. I think, well, I think we can sort of count on many um, great achievements of, of the UN. Um, some failures too, of course, sure. but um, I think the greatest achievement is just creating this idea of this world of nations that everyone can participate in the UN. The UN is for everyone. It's in the, in the charter, it's called We the Peoples. Um, not We the People, but We the Peoples of the, of the whole world. So. I think it's that, that sort of idea or notion of internationalism that is probably the greatest achievement. Um, but some sort of very specific things um, over the last decades, I think through the, through the motivation and drive of the UN, um, helping inspire um, these things, I think we've, we've, we've done, uh, we've made a lot of headway against famine, for example, in the fight against hunger. We've done a lot of work um, in the fight against poverty. Um, uh, those are two very broad areas, but really important accomplishments. Um, the UN can't take credit for all of it, or nearly all of it, but, but certainly um, it's the drive behind the UN is, is pushing those things. Certainly, um, it has had some tremendous achievements. It has also had its detractors and its criticism uh, in trying to navigate a very diverse world. And as uh, we've now moved into the next millennium, um, with, with the internet and the digital age, it is becoming even more complicated. Um, I want to talk, if we could, though, first about the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals that were launched in 2001, and now the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, but prior to, you know, sort of um, talking about SDGs, what can we say about the, the Millennium Development Goals? Were they successful? Um, you know, from 2001 till this year, when they sort of ran its course, it was, you know, according to the World Bank, uh, you know, we talked about um, eradicating or trying to eradicate poverty, but you know, one billion, one billion people still live on less than a dollar twenty-five a day. We still have 800 million people who don't have enough food. Um, so, did the and the Millennium Development Goals were geared more toward developing countries. Were there successes there? Yeah, I, I do think that there were. It was the first time ever that the entire world tried to galvanize around one common uh, platform for the development of the whole planet. Um, and, and one real success was, I, I think, um, so the other side of what you're saying, um, in that 15-year time span, um, overall poverty in the whole world was cut in half. Um, many more people joined the middle class. Um, much more consciousness was raised about um, the environment and, and, and the protection of nature. Um, and, and that sort of leads us to, to how are we doing things differently now with the Sustainable Development Goals. And um, the Secretary General of the UN, um, um, Ban Ki-moon, said, you know, where the, this generation, the, the time is kind of now to, to sort of galvanize the whole world around, around the sustainable development of, of, the, of the world going forward. And he said that we're, we're the first generation that can end poverty in our lifetimes, but we're the last generation that can really stop the worst effects of climate change. So it really is up to us. It is a sort of moment in time, a moment in history, where we need to galvanize the whole world. And what's it, what, so what's different about the Sustainable Development Goals? Um, it, it probably seems very confusing to people, people, people here in Armenia, you know, how is it relevant to people here in Armenia, but it's, it's relevant because the Sustainable Development Goals, the idea is, is that we put together the most consultative process that the UN or perhaps the world has ever known, um, canvassing people of all walks of life, you know, about in all countries in the world, about what are the, the biggest priorities for them um, in, in terms of the development of, of them and their country and their future. Um, and so it was a broadly consultative process. Um, it's very much focused on, on, on moving people out of pro poverty. It's very much, fo the, very much focused on, on, on still managing to save the planet. Um, so growing the economies of the world and, and developing the world, but yet still making sure that it's a, a sustainable growth. Um, and, and I think it's also, 
I, I just think the very fact that it's so consultative was, was really important. And, and, and here in Armenia, Arme small Armenia compared to the rest of the world played a really outsized role in this whole debate. Um, this methodology that we developed here in Armenia um, of these town hall meetings at the really grassroots level of, of bringing people of all walks of life into this discussion. This model was then replicated in many other countries around the world and so Armenia um, had a, a sort of a larger than expected role in, in all of this and, and I hope we'll continue to do so. I want to talk about the role that the United Nations has played in Armenia as well um, because Many of the agencies of the United Nations do operate in Armenia, the UNDP, UNICEF, hopefully one day UN Women as well, which we, do, we don't have yet. Um, and uh, you've been here now for, for a number of years leading uh, the mission here in Armenia, uh, and especially in the wake of Syrian Armenian refugees that we've had and the role that the UN has played. Um, certainly, uh, the people themselves w can attest to the role of the UN, but how, how would you qualify it? Um, well, yeah, the, the UN has, has been in Armenia since the beginning of the, the founding of the Republic of Armenia, so more than 20 years ago. Um, and, and our role has changed as the needs of the country have changed. And, and our purpose here is to, is to support the development of, of the country, of, you know, support of the government's priorities, support of civil society and the people of Armenia. Um, and in the beginning days, 20 plus years ago, um, it was the middle of conflict, and so a lot of our work was around humanitarian assistance, support to refugees, food aid, um, the, the most basic of sort of lifeline that we, that we can support with. Now, it's, um, as, as Armenia has developed, so, so our, our role has, has changed too. And it's true, we've got a broad base of agencies here, but, but still, overall, the UN presence is not huge. Um, Comparatively, in the comparatively in the region, even? yeah. Com well, also compared to other um, external actors that are here, like uh, the international finance organizations that are here, um, our budget is not huge. Again, compared to the region, so we have to work smarter and more networked and, and, and think more cleverly about how we partner um, and, and to do things much differently here because we don't have big budgets here, mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the, the work where I think we've excelled and, and really made a difference, as you mentioned, um, supporting um, uh, assistance to to the Syrian Ar Armenian um, refugees that, that came here and still supporting them. Um, it's the UN High Commissioner for Refugee Agency, the UNHCR, that's that's doing a lot of that work, um, supporting them with like job skills training, but also with with um, assistance in finding shelter and finding apartments, um, sort of the real basics, um, language training. So there's that humanitarian side, but then there's also the work that we're doing um, both in, in policy, practice, um, supporting the government, supporting civil society. Um, I would count as real successes too, um, in, in especially in helping strengthen civil society's role and in, in putting human rights um, uh, on the agenda and helping develop with the government this and civil society that the first human rights action plan which which really holds the people in the government of Armenia quite accountable to very specific um, actions in terms of human rights um, helping pass the the gender equality help draft and, and then getting past the gender equality law um, another area was very important to Armenia um, we've we helped we've helped a lot in terms of um, in, in, in making sure Armenia is best prepared for disasters. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then that, so this sort of call it disaster risk reduction in, in, in sort of UN language. Um, but that, that's an area where now Armenia is seen as a leader, not just in the region, but in the world. Um, and, and where Armenia is sort of exporting its, its, its talent and knowledge um, in this area. Um, so that, that's important. Um, and when I say that we're trying to do things differently is that we're trying to really open up the space in the, for this work we call development work and, and really reach out much more towards the citizens themselves and, and strengthen civil society through this idea of having ci this citizen as expert idea um, where we're not trying to create solutions to Armenia's problems from Rome or Geneva or New York, but, but creating the solutions here, right? And With the participation of the actors. Yes, absolutely. And we've, We've established something a couple of years ago called the Kolba Lab. It's sort right. of our innovation lab, which I think yeah, we, that has worked sure. with. 
And the idea there is to, again, sort of reach out directly to citizens to, to figure out what are the problems and then let's figure out how we can create the solutions, again, through direct sort of citizen engagement. And, and this model, I think, is, um, I think it's perfect for Armenia. It sort of, it builds on the entrepreneurial spirit of Armenia, but it engages youth. Um, it builds on this nascent IT hub that's happening here in Armenia, too. And, What's really cool, I think, is that this model is being Im sort of exported to other countries in which the UN works as a new way of working. Um, and it's something that I think Armenia can be really proud of as it's showing the sort of Armenia way for, right. for the rest of the world. Right. Yeah, oftentimes we're so self-critical uh, and, and, and we keep complaining and we seem to have lost a sense of hope and we don't realize that we are sometimes the leaders in certain areas and with the things that we should be proud of in cooperation with international partners such as the UN. Um, Bradley, the, there's three pillars that for the past 70 years that the UN has focused on, peace and security, development and human rights. Now, moving forward, um, what do you think will be some of the greatest challenges that the UN will have to confront and how do you think, do you think it is prepared? Does it have that consensus, that global consensus, that global trust to move forward in, in, in making those changes that are necessary? That's a great question, the one that I grapple with personally all the time. Um, to give you another quote, this is one of my favorite ones about the UN, it's Doug Hammarskjöld, um, a former Secretary General of, of the UN, um, who died tragically way too early in his, in his term as, as Secretary General. He's, he said, you know, even back then, in the 50s and 60s, the UN was hugely criticized, you know, because he's got these great ambitions and great ideals, and, and he said, I'm not, I'm gonna, just paraphrasing, but he said, look, the UN wasn't designed to um, pave the way towards paradise. It was designed to keep us all from hell. And, and so if you sort of keep that in mind, um, but I think certainly um, the UN needs to be much more sort of fit for purpose, more nimble, more aware of other actors um, to, to remain as relevant as it has. Um, forward. Um, I think in the humanitarian space, um, some of the expertise we have with some of these agencies like World Food Program and, and the UNHCR that are working every day in the toughest places on the planet, like in Syria and Sudan, you can't replace those things. But the development space, is, it's more difficult and we have to continue to prove that we're, um, that, that, that we're open to new ideas, that, that, that we continue to be as creative as possible. But, um, but we're, the UN's undergoing reform now and will continue to, to try to rework and refashion itself um, under its current leadership and certainly going forward. Yeah, wouldn't it be an amazing thing if one day the world didn't need a UN? You know, I'm, I'm glad that you guys exist now, but I mean, uh, keeping us from hell, <laughs> but really trying to get to a point where, where nations could learn to live with one another. Yeah, yeah, and, and or, or just let's, let's maybe envisage a way in which the UN, I mean, because I think that this idea, this, the idea of multilateralism, the idea of, 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 of bringing everyone around the table. Multi-stakeholders. Um, yeah, and, oh, absolutely. yeah. That, that always will be important, right? And when I first joined the UN over 20 years ago, it was right after the Cold War, and, and that was the time when everybody was so, um, idealistic and so optimistic about the future. There was a collective the high, wasn't there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world's uh, population. And, yeah, and especially sort of, you know, the ambitions of, of the UN and, and the sort of multi-stakeholder world. Mm -hmm. um, and things didn't work out, you know, as well as people wanted in, in many respects. And, and there were some obvious failures, but, but also some great successes. So I, I think for me it's about making sure that the UN continues to adapt, and, but to continue to keep this idea of, of, of of internationalism, I guess, um, and, and the best, and, and just use it in, as, as we confront new challenges um, um, with, as you, as you pointed out, new technologies, new media, new ways of reaching people. Um, but, you know, we have, just going back to one of the first points I made, um, we have the ability to, tech, technically, technologically, in terms of knowledge, we have the ability to, to solve poverty, to solve famine in our lifetimes. It's a matter of the political will, the organization of the collective will of the, of the world to, to do these things, and, and we can do it. 
Well, hopefully we will be able to change the paradigm and find that collective political will yeah. that exists. Uh, Bradley Busseto, thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Congratulations on the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, and I hope moving forward with all the multiple challenges that the UN and, and the global community faces that you will be able to confront and tackle them. Thank you, and thank, uh, thanks for bringing us on, and, and happy to be great partners with and I guess the one thing to leave you with is that, yeah, the UN belongs to everybody, um, 193 member states, and, and um, it's, 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 we're all together in this family. So, thank you. The family, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was the UN resident coordinator here in Armenia, Bradley Busseto. Uh, keep following CivilNet.